Welcome to the Protagonist Pub. My name is Tammy, and this is where characters gather. It is Monday morning. I did not realize it was Monday morning when I woke up. Yeah, my body still thinks it's Sunday. Part of it is Dave's fault. He's working from home today, and that's not normal on a Monday. Part of it is also his fault because he gave me a stomach bug late last week, and it's still trying to mess up my week. So, energy's a little lower, but we're getting this done. So, if you're a new subscriber here, welcome. I do weekly wrap-ups because I will not remember every two weeks what I read or didn't read. So you get a weekly wrap-up. This week, every book but one is library book. So um, what did I read last week? Let's talk about the hard DNF first. Hard DNF first was Gone Without a Trace by Mary Turgesson. This is my first book by her. If you haven't seen it yet, but it's mentioned in my library book tag, which is coming out this week. And I read well over half this book, y'all. And uh, it is a very hard note for me. It is secular suspense and premise of the book is this woman's um, boyfriend, fiance, one day just disappears from her life. Not just the house they share, but all of his contacts and pictures on her phone and emails and all that, you know, that trail we all leave is completely erased. She has no anything of him and she fixates on it i don't know better better word she fixates on it and and then slowly she realizes that she's losing her her grasp on reality and she recognizes it and she still continues just to let herself spiral and this is going on for weeks. And it was not my cup of tea. I really just wanted to take the protagonist and um, slap her upside the head and tell her to get a grip. And I know stuff happens after where I put the book down and I don't care. It was a disturbing, uncomfortable read and not my cup of tea. So, you know, there you go. So the next book is a soft DNF and it's more because it's slow paced and my brain does not want slow paced at the moment. That was Bellwether by Susanna Kersley. This too is in my library book haul. I will check this back out from the library when my brain wants a slower pace, multiple point of view, for lack of a better description, thought novel. Right now it does not want a thought novel. The writing is beautiful. The story it's beginning to tell is one that I will love, but my brain just wants a little more action and a little less introspection at the moment. So it's a soft DNF. I will undoubtedly pick it back up at some point in the future. Okay. So what did I read this week? I did read um, another library book. That is The Sunlit Man by Brandon Sanderson. This is the last of the quote unquote secret books he wrote during the event that shall not be named. And this one is Cosmere specific. And I absolutely loved it. 
I have picked up one of the other secret books from library that was um, the Frugal Wizard's Handbook to Medieval England. Didn't enjoy it. I did not have any of those issues with this one. This read like a Cosmere novel. And it is part fantasy. It's part sci-fi. You know, it, it's a Cosmere novel. I loved it. I, I won't spoil anything for you. Um, it is fantastic. And as a result of picking this one up, I did learn that Audible has a bunch of Sanderson books that just hit the Audible Plus catalog, um, including one of the short stories that is referenced in this book. So I need to read, listen to that this week. Um, I'm very much looking forward to it. This was a fantastic novel. I hope this main character shows up again in a different Cosmere book in the future or gets his, you know, another book to himself. It was that good, which is what I expect from Sanderson. The Frugal's Guide was a one-off miss for me. And I think it was a combination of uh, my brain wasn't in the mood to read it and it just wasn't working for me at the time. So, however, Sunlit Man is fantastic. If you like Sanderson, if you read the Cosmere, it's very, it reads very quickly and it is fascinating. So pick up Sunlit Man. Okay. My last read of the week was on my Kindle. That was my Phony Valentine by Courtney Walsh. This is the second book in the Heart Holiday Mystery Series, or Heart Holiday Series. This is a contemporary rom-com, and reading it is entirely because Amanda couldn't stop gushing about this book and its companion, um, My Phony Valentine, which I reviewed last week. I will link that down below. I love this book. Y'all, Amanda's obsession is completely justified. The main character, male character in My Lucky Charm is Gray. He's a hockey player. And there is surprising depth to this character. He is a complex, brooding hero. And I absolutely loved this book it made me cry it made me laugh eloise is our heroine she is definitely the sunshine to his grumpy and i i devoured this book in one day it is a fast easy read and it is fantastic courtney walsh's independently published books are so worth picking up. They're completely different than what she publishes for Thomas Nelson. And I will have no qualms reading a Courtney Walsh independently published book in the future. I will, I will skip her traditionally published stuff. They don't work for me. However, my lucky charm, y'all, you don't even have to read the first book. Just, it, it'll help, but it's fantastic. I will say that when my lucky charm opened up and through three quarters of the book, I was convinced, convinced that Courtney had made a egregious timeline error. And it wasn't until three quarters of the way through the book that I realized she didn't. And it's because when the first book takes place, which is my phony Valentine, um, the characters meet in the beginning of January. They agree to fake date until Valentine's Day. So, you know, four weeks. It's very clear when they're dating. When My Lucky Charm opens up, it's New Year's Eve. And then it's the opening weeks of January. So, and there's no indication in the beginning of the book that New Year's Eve is the conclusion of the year 
when the characters of my phony Valentine meet. So it appears, at least to my brain, that they, there were overlapping events. And the overlapping events of book two were conflicting with what was happening in book one. It is cleared out three quarters of the way through. Most people probably wouldn't catch it. It caught my eye. I should have had faith. Yeah, this book was fantastic. Uh, you know, go pick it up. So that is what I read this week. I don't know what I'm going to read next this week. Um, I am listening to The Count of Monte Cristo, so I will probably finish that. And then I will start Southern Charm Readathon books and Dave books and all the things. Maybe not today. Hopefully the stomach buck is gone by tomorrow. So what did you read last week? Is there anything I should pick up? Leave a comment down below, like, and subscribe. And I will see you here next time at the Protagonist Pub.